Good Thursday morning, and thanks for checking out your latest long-range forecast update. Michael Clark with BAM Weather. We're going to get right into an analysis today, including a busy pattern with the potential for an outbreak of severe weather and tornadoes uh, Monday and Tuesday of early next week, and then a pattern that progressively churns warmer and drier, we think, especially in the central U.S. here. We're going to talk about some updated seasonal forecast thought processes for May, June, July, and... Uh, now, yeah, looking at the uh, potential impact on the uh, corn and soybean yields from a weather analog perspective. So be sure to share this with a friend, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Any of you watching, we'd love for you to post it on your Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, and, and let people know where to watch. Okay. All right, so visible satellite this morning. Um, it's 65 and clear where I'm at. It's amazing out there today. Uh, one thing I love about the Clarity platform, which, by the way, you can trial it for free right now if you go to BAMWX.com and just click Get Instant Access, you can start a free trial right now. No credit card required or anything like that. But, man, I tell you, it's it's a great day around here, and uh, we do have a chance for some thunderstorms later. This is a look at the forecast, hourly forecast across the area. What I really love about this is, is I get expert insight from a human meteorologist and the ag focus is a big one, especially across here today, because you can see that spray forecast is good up until about 1 o'clock. And then we start to caution you this afternoon with small thunderstorm chances around the area. Locally heavy amounts of rain. Some places could get an inch of rain across central Indiana tonight. This is a look here at current radar, uh, taking a look across the, the central U.S. And again, we can see there's, there's plenty of activity in terms of shower and thunderstorm activity across the central plains. A lot of needed rainfall ongoing. Uh, look at this down here in Texas. This is a nasty line of thunderstorms moving through portions of uh, Oklahoma and uh, North Texas. They don't need the rain. Uh, they've, they've had a lot of rain. This is the observed rain over the last seven days. Look at this just north and west of Fort Worth. Um, you know, that's the location by point forecast. Let's turn that off. Um, but this is the observed rainfall totals the last seven days, 11 inches of rain. And again, it's raining there right now. We've had some needed rain starting to pile up across portions of Kansas, too. Um, and there are some rains continuing to uh, you know go through the area this morning. Future rainfall forecast the next 24 hours looks like this. Um, again, this updates every hour, goes out to 24 hours. I'll change the map. I can interrogate this map. And, and ask it, hey, how much rain are we going to get? 24-hour rainfall forecast for West Iowa, eastern Nebraska. Locations could see locally upwards of an inch of rain. And then look down here across Texas and Oklahoma where that heavy rain is rolling through. So it's busy nonetheless. The severe risk for today will be focused across western Kansas, the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. Small chance of a tornado, a little bit better, more concentrated chance of a significant hail risk, maybe some larger hail. The future radar tool from Clarity will help us identify that window of potentially thunderstorms right there that can produce some big hail. You can see those pop up tonight between about 7 to, to 9.30 p.m. You can see the nature of those could be pretty nasty uh, a time or two in the supercell-like nature of those storms. So another really neat tool here on Clarity is that future radar tool. All right, so the severe risk tomorrow it's going to stay kind of in the South Central Plains with a with just a marginal risk. The day three outlook, it's going to continue in the same spot for more thunderstorms to be strong, possibly severe down there. Okay, let's take a check here on the spring outlook. What a great job done by the team here on the outlook for precipitation, especially in the eastern ag belt. We thought it would be wet. We thought there'd be a lot of rain and there certainly has been. That's been the case. The only spot that, that obviously needed to be wetter in the outlook really kind of stretches down further south and west here through Texas. But a great forecast, drier here, wetter here, and you can see that over on the, on the outlook uh, part. So um, great job by these guys with that. We're going to turn our focus to early next week for the potential uh, for uh, a significant outbreak potentially of severe weather. This is for Monday. Um, this, is, this is a pretty strong signal right now, and the, the signal may shift east uh, into the Ohio Valley Tuesday. So a multi-day severe weather outbreak potential here, at least for a, possibly a tornado outbreak. Some strong tornadoes are not out of the question. Um, we'll show you the latest kind of uh, forecast just throughout the day today, 
And again, you can see the showers and thunderstorms that are going to move through the central plains. There's that heavy rain in Iowa we talked about. Uh, I will go out here through uh, early tonight or late tonight into Friday morning. Waking up tomorrow, there will be rain, quite a uh, quite a bit of rain th scattered about throughout the the grain belt, the central U.S. Here, um, folks dealing with scattered rain and thunderstorms. I know a lot of planting going on right now. A lot of people are out working, so you may have to dodge some rain and some storms tomorrow, especially in the east. I'll take you out here to lunchtime tomorrow. Again, you can see a widespread shower and thunderstorm threat here from the latest of model data this morning and I continue to go forward down to Friday night that's moving from Indiana into into Ohio um, so again plenty of rain to be had out east and look at that more heavy rain and thunderstorm activity possible in south central U.S. there Oklahoma Texas so out to the next 42 hours this is a look at rainfall all right using synoptic heavy rain prospects there in western Iowa locally two to three inches we go south here, again, more heavy rain prospects in the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, and then over there in East Texas as well. And then we go here, and there will be isolated higher amounts, HRRR indicating 2-inch plus uh, isolated rain amounts here with these uh, heavier thunderstorm cells tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that uh, going forward, okay? I, I will tell you real quick, uh, you know, just I want to show you the, the favored kind of outcome of rainfall the next seven days. We'll look at the evening European model, and we'll just go out seven days. And again, you can see, um, you know, kind of the, the scattered nature. It, it will rain here. The global models are having a little bit of a tougher time picking up on the rainfall. The, the GFS model, um, probably a little bit better in the Ohio Valley, just given um, the overall uh, kind of uh, thunderstorm threat Friday and then again into uh, early next week. I'll show you the Clarity 7-day rainfall forecast. That's, if I had to put pen to paper and say, what, what is it? This is what I would favor right now for rainfall total the next seven days. Again, always available to view in Clarity. And your local forecast, anywhere you point and click, you're getting just loaded with really, really valuable information on that rainfall data as well. So pretty cool that the Chances tab here uh, for rainfall will give you all kinds of really neat data for rain as well uh, in, the, in that regard too. So pretty neat nonetheless. Again, week one on the left, it's warm and it's drier than normal, but it still rains in the Ohio Valley. It's wetter than normal in the Central Plains, but it's needed. Week two, we see the drier indications in the pattern set in. That's ultimately going to be because a, a front slides through and it's colder here into the east. Warmth backs up into the west and northwest, but it's a much more calmer look in the pattern here in week two, okay? Overnight data, the weekly data from the CFS Weekly, it updates every day, you know, it gives us new information every day, but it, it continues the theme at suggesting mid to late May, a drier look across the central U.S., the, across the grain belt, and a very warm look at times. Um, I still think we can deal with a front here or there, but I think that temperatures can surge well above the normal pretty easily in the May. Case in point for today, uh, the, the high temperature in Indy today could get into the low 80s. That would be top five warmest, uh, possibly for the Indy area. 82, 83 degrees would be pushing that. So drier pattern, warmer pattern suggested in the weekly data. Um, let's take a look at some of those seasonal indicators right now. The evolution of Enzo, which is... Is it El Nino? Is it La Nina? What are we thinking? The best matches right now are going to be these, these five years here, 17, 12, 8, 01, and 96. And that's kind of the evolution. If we were to look at just the summer pattern, the suggestion here from that and from the, the forecast would be that um, this is a fairly dry summer, uh, especially in the heart of the grain belt. Um, you're going to have some prospects for precip further east and south better chances in here. Very concerned about the potential of a significantly drier growing season and also with the focal point of some significant heat as well. That heat will not be as pronounced east based on Enzo evolution and based on weather models in general right now. So uh, interesting nonetheless. When we look at our top five years in the shorter term, May on the top, May, June, July on the bottom. These years are the favored ones, 01, 06, 11, 12, and 21. All right, in May, these years combined, 
precipitation here on the left. Again, you can see fairly drier pattern overall. It's wetter across the Great Lakes in the northeast and across the south a little bit. Um, temperatures pan out to be above normal for the most part, a warmer May in general, with the exception of the southeast. May, June, July in total. Again, these precip anomalies are, are dry. These, this is a dry look for that three-month period, and it's very, very warm. Probably multiple 90-degree plus high days and some 100-degree high temperature days in there. So I am looking at a warmer and drier summer continuing to still be the, the front runner of, of the risk right now. The May precip forecast, just in general, if I look at all the models, I mean, let's, let's look at these. There's the CFS. You know, it's dry. There's the, here's the Canadian. It's very dry for May. Um, there's different versions of models. Here's, here's some different, a, a NASA version. It's a little wetter east, but it's still very dry in the central U.S. Um, there's other versions of this model, too. We call the, the, the GFDL or the GIM. Uh, there's different versions of our monthly models, right? All very dry. When we look at the international multi-model ensemble, it's all the models in the world blended together. For May, the biggest concentration of below normal precip right now lies in here, with chances of rain to be at least normal, perhaps, up and over the top and in the eastern grain belt. Okay, The summer forecast, looking at this, the summer forecast, I'll go back here and we'll look at the three-month forecast and we'll look at uh, June, July, August. This is the outlook right now, all models combined for summer. All right, it's a lot like the analogs, very dry central plains, north, uh, it's basically central western grain belt. Wetter prospects east, better potential east. That's kind of been our thought process all along. The North American multi-model ensemble, which is a lot of the models here in North America and, and, and all of uh, our products, um, you can see the indication here of a, of a pretty dry growing season. Now, I will tell you before I show you these, big warm bias in these maps. They have, a, they, have they just always lean warm. <laughs> uh, you know, you want to look at where the, the strongest suggestion for warmth is, and that would be where the red is, okay? But these maps have a pretty, pretty warm bias. What does it look like for yields? Well, 2012 obviously is a big one here. It obviously weighs, it obviously says, wow, eight, almost eight points below trend could be nasty. I'm not saying it's going to be that by any means. We do have uh, 01, 06, and 21 that were slightly above trend. It's 11 and 12 that throw the wrench in, and there's a lot of similarities to 11 and 12. If I had to put a, a, a you know, if there was a gun to my head, I would say I would be concerned about a below trend corn yield this year. And listen, five out of the last uh, six growing seasons have been below trend yields. Weather in the most recent years just hasn't been the most favorable. And this year, in my opinion, it's not. We're not looking at a garden-type setup for weather. Soybeans right now, we'd say a point below trend. Um, you've got three years, again, at or above. And you've got a period here where they were starkly below, which is what we're concerned about. So, again, um, head over BAMWX.com. Start the free trial. Check it out. A lot of people planting right now. You can literally talk to a meteorologist in person from the application, tracking hour by hour forecast, looking at radar, all the things. So thanks for watching the YouTube channel today. Make sure you subscribe, share it with a friend. We'll talk to you guys soon.